Today I'm going to show you my graphic settings for iRacing, also some little optimizations you can make in Windows and Nvidia to help get you the best performance and the best quality. Naturally, as there are countless combinations and permutations of setting things up here, I can't really show you what your settings are going to be, but hopefully after seeing how I set up my sim to give me the best quality and the best performance, that can really clue you in as to what you can change and adjust along the way, or maybe just give you a baseline and then you can adjust from there. If you enjoy this guide, I have countless guides like this on my channel already, and I'll have many more coming out in the future. So if you want to subscribe, guys, please introduce yourself to the button below. But yeah, let's get straight to it. First up is Windows settings. So first things first, the Windows settings. Under System Display and Graphics, when we expand the Advanced Graphics Settings tab here, we're going to see HAGS, Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. We're going to turn this on. Next up, under Gaming and Game Mode, we're going to turn Game Mode on or off. It depends. Personally, for me, I turn it off because I do recording and live streaming. So I, I like, you know, other things getting just as much power and keeping it balanced in that regard. If you are exclusively using iRacing, you can turn this on and that basically tells your PC, hey, make sure we prioritize what's going on here and we can lessen background stuff. Unfortunately for me, background stuff is stuff like OBS and other processing and different kind of encoding. So I don't need this on. And lastly, under power, power options, uh, under control panel, hardware and sound power options, I turn on ultimate performance. So next up is the NVIDIA control panel. Obviously, I'm using an NVIDIA card. If you're using an AMD card, you can skip this step. But in general, this is what I use. Uh, these settings have all been, you know, they've been taken left, right, center, all over. Um, over the past few years to just try and help get the best settings. Likewise here and likewise in the iRacing settings that are coming up. Doing these sort of things just helps your system and enables it to do the best job it can do. So there are a few optimizations we can do in here. It's leaving it stuck isn't really the best thing to do. So when it comes to anti-aliasing, we're going to leave it off, on, and application controlled. So for anti-aliasing mode, it's going to be application controlled for FXAA. We're going to leave that off. The sim's going to do it. Gamma correction, we're going to leave that on. Background application max frame rate, we're going to leave that off. CUDA GPUs is going to be all. CUDA system fallback policy is going to be driver default. DSR off. Low latency mode, we're going to leave it on on or ultra. Um, I do think this is worth it for simulators or shooters um, where timing is obviously a very important latency issues. Max frame rate off. G-Sync compatible if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor. Uh, Multi-frame sampled AA, we're going to leave that off. Um, auto and auto for OpenGL. Power management mode, we're going to set to prefer maximum performance. This is very important. Preferred refresh rate is going to be the highest available. The shader cache size will be the driver default. And then for texture filtering, the first will be off. The second will be allow. Quality will be set to quality, which is important. Trilinear optimization will be set to on. This allows multi-threaded rendering. So that's quite critical to have this on. Likewise with threaded optimizations, on for the same reasons. Triple buffering, vertical sync will be off. And that's about all the settings I use. You'll see lots of different sort of versions of this. In general, I find this gives me the best stability and I've never had really issues with it. Hit apply and let's move on over to iRacing. So in the iRacing settings, we're going to come over to the graphics tab. Before we do that, we can come over to display. So we want to make sure our resolution is correct. This isn't a how to set up triples, although I am on triples. That is irrelevant for what I'm actually doing. So just so you know, I'm on 1440p, 32 inch, 165 hertz monitors. There's three of them as well. So these settings are taken into account the fact I have to render things three times. But we want to come over to the graphics settings. That's where the that's where the juiciness is. So presets, we're going to set it to custom and custom. Um, in the graphic settings for iRacing, you have the driving settings when you're actually driving, and then you have replay settings. So I have these set quite a lot higher because I don't really care about frame rate when I'm um, recording stuff. I want best quality. And to be honest, sometimes it like runs at 30 or 40 FPS because I have everything so high because that's because I just do like sim racing photography where I go out and I try and get nice screenshots. So FPS doesn't really matter. So you can really customize replays to what you want it to be. And it's less uh, critical because you're not driving in the moment. So it's not going to mess you up for a race. You can really experiment more here. But we're going to be dealing with the driving sections, all these on the left hand side, and they're all in lovely little sections. If you're curious about what any of them do, you can actually hover over them and they all give you a nice little description of what they do. And anything that's high, you will see that it actually has high GPU usage. If we scroll over high CPU usage, some of the settings themselves actually have high GPU usage. If we can find one do, 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 do. there, high GPU usage. Now, let's get rocking and rolling. So we're going to start together from the top down and I'm going to let you know what I use. So sky and clouds I leave on medium as high can cause a bit of stuttering. Car detail I always leave very high. This is important for realism. Uh, the cars are very well detailed in iRacing and you want them looking their best. So if you can have this high, I really would leave it high. 
So for a pit object, I would leave this on medium. If you add it to high, it'll have people actually physically moving and stuff, and it can have quite a large impact. So medium is perfect for me. So event, I leave this on high as it's important for keeping the track environment somewhat realistic and having all these little bits and bobs, such as poles or whatever it is everywhere. Uh, I leave this on high and it doesn't seem to have too much of an impact on me. Grandstands, I leave on low as they are very large objects and they're not too important. But then again, without them, the tracks look very bare. So I do leave them on low. That means the grandstands do low load, <laughs> but I do keep it down low. I don't put it higher as it just makes all these objects and stuff more complex. And if anything, it starts getting overly complex and it just looks a bit off. So low is just fine. So crowds, I leave on medium. If you put it on high, you don't notice much of a difference, but it has a massive FPS cost. So I wouldn't go near that. This is one you can turn down to low if you want. It'll turn it down the, the, the crowd down to 2D images um, rather than 3D objects. So personally, I leave it on medium. There's no real issue there. For objects, I leave that on high, again, just for realism and just spotting things on the track, whether it's brake markers or little bits in the curbs on the road or like where roads meet, all these little objects, um, whether it's actual physical brake markers themselves, it's very important that I leave that nice and high. Um, and again, it's one of those settings that if you can avoid turning it down, I really would. Sometimes, though, turning it down can help with FPS. Foliage is the same thing as well. Medium seems to be, you get a little bit of foliage, but then you don't get too much of an FPS hit. This can be turned off completely if you have FPS issues. To pass trees, I have it off. The benefit for having this on isn't worth it when it comes to frame rate performance, but then high quality trees, it is. Uh, there's not much of a cost, but you get better looking trees and trees in sim racing are always awesome. Headlight detail, I leave this on medium. I find that to be the sweet spot of um, performance to quality. A virtual mirror, so if you want to have mirrors on in your cars, just understand that they will have a massive cost on frame rate. In video game language, I believe that's called picture in picture. So we're obviously looking at a picture and they're trying to put another picture in that picture that's sourcing from a different direction. So in general, it's going to cost you a lot of performance. If you are going to use cockpit mirrors, I would highly suggest you do not use higher detail in mirrors. Personally, I think the image is plenty sharp as it is in those mirrors without this on, and it's just a huge cost on FPS. If you have a supercomputer, sure, turn it on, but in general, you don't have to use it. Headlights on track and mirrors, again, can cost performance, so I leave this off. The virtual mirror, um, interest, in fact, would be that the smaller it is, or the tighter it is, the less of a cost it has. Naturally, the mirror itself, although it does look like a static image, it is picture in picture. So similar to other simulators like Arma and stuff like that, where you're in a tank and you're looking at a screen, that is very intensive. But I wouldn't overly go sacrificing visibility for FPS. This would be the last place you'd want to come to try save FPS. Under other car details, so max cars, we're going to leave that in 63. This is important for overlays and stuff, because if these is are if this is too low or lower than 63, let's say you have it down at 40 and there's 45 cars in a session and you're using an overlay system or you have a leaderboard on another screen, that's not going to register all the cars. And you're actually going to have, let's say, P3 show up as first. And then when first gets closer, it's just going to be messy. So you leave this on 63. This doesn't really affect performance. This just says how many cars there physically can be on the server, as far as I know. So next up is draw cars. Uh, you can save performance here. I use 20 and 12. The first figure being in the mirror, or sorry, not in the mirror, what's ahead of you in the main field of vision. The other one is in the mirror, what's being drawn behind you. Um, 20 and 12 works fine, but you can use 30 and 8 or 30 and 12. And again, for draw pits, I use 20 and 8. Seems to work fine for me. I wouldn't have this ex super, super high as it can have quite a cost on, you know, the server and actually your system having to load up all these cars, especially if they might even be out of sight. Dynamic LOD, I have this turned off, although it does sound quite good in the description. Um, I find I just have no need for it. And if anything, it's going to add issues rather than kind of take them away from me. So I kind of gently skip past this area. So shader quality, you can set to max. This is what would have been known as ultra on the old UI. Um, particle details is important for high for such as smoke, dust, grass, all these little things that really help the immersion. Um, if you need to lower this down, you can. This will improve your frame rate. But in general, I would I would try to have this high first. Full resolution, I do leave off as I'm kind of paranoid. That'll just add more performance strain as a lot of these settings I've tweaked up. There were settings I did have to kind of just keep switched off so I could kind of tweak up the ones that I thought were more important. 
So shadow maps I leave on for realism, object self shadowing off, dynamic objects I leave off, night shadow maps I leave on, walls on, shadow map filter, this list here, the more down you go, the better looking it gets, but at the cost of performance. So try and pick something and even pick something that you like and then just shift back one. They're all kind of very similar, especially once you get in the middle of the road here, like these are quite similar. I just use PCF4P works a charm for me number of lights i set to three three is the default but you can lower this to um to improve your fps and by number of lights is how many number of lights can cause different shadows in the particular scene you're in in the simulator so for post processing effects uh motion blur leave off you can use it in replay that'll make things look good you know when cars are moving fast motion blur is important like even if in real life if you just move your hand like this we have motion blur irl so that's why sometimes motion blur in uh recordings can actually make them look more realistic than sharp images moving. Um, so yeah, you want that on in replays, but in driving, not so much. You like things being a bit more crisper there. Sharpening on, HDR on. This can be a bit taxing on your system, so trial this on or off. HDR will, you know, make the sun do flares. It'll make brake lights grow a little, uh, glow a little bit. HDR can really add this layer of immersion on the simulator and really kind of take away some of the rough edges that iRacing has when it comes to graphics for me personally. SSAO distortion and heat haze I turn off as I just don't see the the benefit when it comes to quality and sacrificing performance for them so I'm not too into that apart from replay I leave SSAO on uh, SSR I leave off personally I just think it's too heavy of a hitter for me to have on and it's for stuff like in the rain I can see the rain just fine with it off uh, you can test this to see what your needs are but personally for me I leave it off it's absolutely fine off dynamic cube maps and fixed cube maps you should read these as FPS killers and FPS killers. I leave these off. So uh, the anti-aliasing method, I use MSAA. I use 2X and I use simple. Here we have options such as soft, neutral, sharp. Simple seems to be just the safest. I leave 2X here and MSAA. It gives me consistency, but you can make your sim look great with these settings. So have a play around, see what your system can tolerate. But in general, I wouldn't go overboard here as it can really hurt FPS. So yeah, this seems to work very well. So here in frame rate, I do limit my frames and I limit them to what my monitor can handle, which is 165 FPS. Um, NVIDIA Reflex, we're going to set this to enabled plus boost. This is important. Um, you, we won't be setting this setting here. And video memory, we're going to leave video memory swap high res cars off and we're going to leave the high car textures on. This is critical for seeing those lovely, beautiful car paints on the track. And yeah. Well, that was easy. So those are my settings for iRacing. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe as I'll have many more guides coming out like this as well as my Sim Racing Psychology series. And if you have any questions at all, these are just my settings. Um, obviously, I can't cater them for everyone, but these kind of let you know just my thought process behind how I set them. And hopefully it's helped just a little bit. Guys, I'll see you on the track.